Alright, so the story for Oz the Great and Powerful starts off in black and white. It's about 15-20 minutes in the beginning where it's black and white, kind of like the original. It's a, it's a homage, definitely. But it starts off with Oz the Great and Powerful, of course, played by James Franco, who is a magician uh, at a traveling circus who's just trying to make a, uh, you know some money just make a living of course and you know he's doing a pretty good job until you know they start not believing in his magic and then something else happens where he has to actually run out of that circus and jump in a hot air balloon and get out of there but of course when he does that he runs right at, he, he floats right into a tornado and when he's in that tornado he gets sucked in and then sucked right back out but when he gets sucked out he gets sucked out into the world of Oz and of course, when he lands on Oz, he meets up with a woman named Theodora, who is the Good Witch, played by Mila Kunis, and she quickly tells him about the prophecy. If a man who is a magician named Oz comes to the world of Oz, then that person is going to be king after he defeats the Wicked Witch, who, of course, enslaves a bunch of people and he's evil. I mean, she's evil, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And he has to go and, of course, defeat her if he wants to be the king. He meets up with Evan, Evan, Evanora, I think, Evanora, another witch, played by uh, Rachel Weiss, and she tells him about the prophecy, some more, blah, blah, blah. If you want to be king, you have to go kill this witch. And, of course, he sets out to go kill the witch, and along his way, he meets up with a monkey, uh, voiced by Zach Braff, who becomes his assistant, and a little girl made out of China, yeah, it's a little China girl about this big, um, played by, I, I don't know, uh, Joey King, I think his name is, I'm not sure, I looked up the cast list, but um, they follow him as companions, and he has to go and of course defeat the evil witch, but of course there's more to it than just, just that, there's actually a little bit more, a couple twists and turns, and if you saw the original movie, then you might not, I mean, you might know where those twists and turns are going to come, so, yeah. To be honest, I actually really like the story here, especially since there's so many different references from the first movie, Wizard of Oz, but they're not in your face like, I remember this. No, it's more like, hey, if you didn't get it, that's fine. It's part of the story anyway, but if you did get it, good job. And <laughs> good job. You should have got it because it's a freaking famous and fantastic movie that lives the test of time. Go watch it if you haven't. Um, it's a good movie. But um, I love that movie. So... There's a lot of references, they're not in your face, I love that. And also it ties into Wizard of Oz perfectly at the end. I'm like, Jesus, that's why this character feels the way they do about this other character, or this is why that's like this and stuff. And it's really great, it really is tying in to the movie perfectly. And I love that at the end. And of course, you have the acting, and everybody does a great job here. James Franco's character, Oz, is not a really likable character. He's a con artist, and in the beginning you really don't like him. He's like fooling women into, you know making out with him and stuff, he's fooling people in, you know, he's a magician, so he's fooling people that, you know, magic is real, and it's not, it really isn't, and he's just fooling people trying to make money, but he wants more from his life, and later on you actually start to like him a little bit more. So yeah, he did a great job, especially when he act actually had to act with a bunch of CG creations. I thought he did a damn good job with that, reacting with these CG creations. He did a good job with that. So yeah, he was great in this film. You also have Rachel Weisz, uh, you have uh, Mila Kunis, uh, come on, you have, uh, what's her name, Michelle Williams, you have Zach Braff, you have a wide variety of different actors and characters in this film, and they all do a damn good job, especially Mila Kunis. I have to mention her because in the beginning, she's a really likable character. You really do like her. Then later on, something happens, I don't really want to spoil it, but it's such a cool little twist that it's really kind of, I wouldn't say emotional, but it's kind of like, oh man, really? Damn, okay. So... She did a great job here, especially when that whole thing happens. She actually starts to become even better, I would say. I don't want to spoil it, you know. <laughs> I really don't. It's a really cool little twist, too. So, yeah, I really, really enjoyed the acting here. And to be honest, I really enjoyed the film. But before I get to my rating, I have to talk about, of course, the visuals. The visuals in this film are absolutely breathtaking. They truly, truly are. And what I love about the visuals here is that they don't put it front center like, oh, like Alice in Wonderland where, oh, look all these beautiful visuals, look at them. No, it's not like that. It actually puts the camera, makes the ca the characters front and center, makes them the main focus. And, you know, the visuals are around there. They look beautiful. All the sets, all the costumes, all the beautiful CG effects, all the characters, they all moat properly. Everything looks fantastic, but my main, main love about the visuals is that it's not like in your face, and I love that, especially since when you get into the action, 
There's not really much action in this film. I mean, it's a Wizard of Oz film, so I was hoping there wouldn't be, and there wasn't. It really is a movie where if it, there is action, it's more like the characters are running away from something, or they're, you know, tricking the enemy or something like that. There's no real big, like, sword fights. This isn't Snow White and the Huntsman. This isn't that at all. This isn't even Alice in Wonderland, where it turns into an action movie at the end. No, this is not. This is a movie that it feels very much like The Wizard of Oz, and I love that. So overall, the visuals here are astonishing and they don't put it front center, which I love. The characters are extremely likable and I would love to see them again in a future film, which most likely will happen. Actually, I think they already signed on for a sequel, so even if this bombs, maybe we'll get a sequel, I don't know. Um, which it won't bomb, there's no way. Um, and the visuals, like I said, are amazing. The story here is really, really good, especially since there's a bunch of references and they tie it into The Wizard of Oz perfectly. And for, to be honest, there's plenty of parts in the story where I actually started getting a little, not teary-eyed, but like, oh man, I like these characters, I want to see a sequel, or oh man, I like that character, that sucks that that happened to that character. I was like, am I feeling this way about a movie that is trying to be Alice in Wonderland? I mean, I like that movie, but I didn't feel that at all for that film. So, it was really weird, and I really enjoyed this film, I really did. The only problems I have is that sometimes it does get a little boring, and sometimes the, the comedy isn't all that funny, but for the most part, I really enjoyed this film, and I do like it a little bit more than Jack the Giant Slayer. I'm going to give this a 35 out of a 40. I really very much enjoyed this film. Definitely go check it out. I, I liked it. I really did. Hell, I would even say I loved it in a way. So there you go. There's my review for Oz, the great and powerful. It's great. It's pretty powerful, too. So there's, there's my review. Thank you and goodbye.